The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and 11 o'clock till 12 Eastern Time. Obviously, at this time that you're listening to right now, and the number to call is 877-927-6648. Hey, let's try some international calls. 1-727-445-1044. And the reason I say that uh, is because international markets are were down sharply early this morning, dragged the market down here in the futures, then there was a counter trend rally, and now we're back, and this is probably close to the worst part of the day, with the Dow down 172 at 40,584. The S&P is down 25 at 1548. Uh, Got the uh, the Nas Nasdaq is down sixty eight to thirty one ninety six. Now this is going to be very interesting. Why? Because you've got uh, if I can just find it over here. Let me just put it in. You've got gold. Uh, actually, you know what? If you don't mind, I'm just going to do this. Uh, one second. There you are. So what we have at this particular point because gold had been you know, you know decimated to the downside just absolutely smashed well the gld is at 134.16 it's up at 136 and there's a this is the period that we got to look real closely at uh what is happening in gold will it suddenly become uh some kind of a uh, what can we call it a harbinger of safety if there's some real fears about the banking uh, and the different countries uh, financial systems. That's what we're going to look at. So gold is up about 20 bucks um, at, uh, let's see, GCM. Mm, I saw that a moment ago. Now it's gone. Why is this delayed? GCM. GCM. It's up 80. No, no, it should be up more. It's up $20. And uh, most importantly, um, if you've got the TLT up, you'll see that the TLT, which is the Lehman uh, 20 year iShares, is up, c getting close to the peak D that was made over at 123.43 on the 5th. Right now it's at 122.97. Let me just show you a chart here. I think it's quite uh, illus illustrative. Um, you've got the 30 year T bond yield. And this is going to be quite interesting. Why? Because, let me expand it a little bit. I just want to give you the best view possible. There it is. You will see that the last move from the 24th, the week of the 24th of July of last year at 24.52, the 30-year yield, that's the white one, went to a high of, I didn't type that in, 32.84. So that's 32.84, three ups, 32.84. Now, what's important about this is that that 3.284, which is 3.284%, was a peak E. And every single time we've had a peak E, going back, except there was one D, but going back uh, from 2009, that's, uh, that's quite a while, you've had, in the weekly charts, peak E's give a, a substantial pullback. Well, this pullback so far has gone from 3284 to 2873, number one. And number two is the 10-year the T note yield it had made a peak F and has gone from the uh, 30, I'm sorry, not 30, but 20.86. Let me just type that in. 20.86 to 20.86 level, peak F, down to where it is right now at 16.93. So... How, what is happening here? The five-year yield went to a peak E and it's down at 6.86. So what is happening here with the T-bonds, uh, the TLT up 94 cents instead of being up about two or three points is that this is fascinating. For a long time, I kept talking about the three bears, Dolly, Vixie, and Bondi. That's the dollar, bonds, and the volatility index. All of a sudden, you had a breakaway. You had the dollar, which started to, to, to move higher independently as the others were still weak. Then, 
the last two days you saw the volatility last three days you saw the volatility index spiral to 17 let me just show you right here uh, VIX dot X to 17 and is now in leg D up whoa at 17.87 leg D in the daily D for daily um, it is way above the 15.73 200 period exponential moving average in the daily it hasn't yet gotten to 20.55 the 200 period moving average in the weekly but the monthly says, uh-oh, you've got slightly rising stochastic for a couple of months now. Actually, for almost a year. You've got the MACD fast-moving average. That's the green line if you're looking at Tiger TV. Turning up. So what are we looking at? We're looking at a situation all of a sudden. And I do say all of a sudden because it really did happen very suddenly. Where you've got the potential... For the volatility index, and now I'm going to jump around a little bit. If you don't mind, you know, I, I, I have to always jump around because that's just the way I like to work. That you have the potential SPX.X for the S&P peak D in the, in the weekly chart, peak F in the daily chart, leg C up, which is still very bullish in the monthly chart, but it's saying be careful here. Even though the MACD and stochastic is still very good in the weekly chart, be careful because there could be a pullback to the trend line breakout, the rising trend line breakout, and then it could come back to 1521. We're at 1548 in the S&P, down 26. So I say that because, as I said to subscribers this morning, the reason why we wanted to add, go to the short side today, we added uh, in our positions, uh, on the long positions we added a short, is because I'm seeing more and more stocks become extremely toppy, and I'm, I'm looking at more and more sectors becoming very toppy. So as a result, uh, that, that's what we did. Now, what's really interesting about this is that if you're looking at weakness, then the IWM, which has been the weak link, it was the strongest. Now it's the weakest. I have to call that a peak A, B, C, D, E. I suppose I could give that an alternate count. Maybe a peak E in the weekly, whatever it is, it's a very poor poor uh, chart pattern right at this moment. The week's not finished, only halfway through the week because the MACD has turned down fast-moving averages below the slow-moving average and the stochastic has just gone under 80%. Uh, the week is still young, as I like to say, so we'll see what happens by the close today. But so far, this is very poor and it says that the IWM must find support at eight, around about 88.30 and 88.30 is also uh, the close to the area of the last doji low bar on the 26th of february at 88.79 so you can see it 89.51 down minus 2.16 this is a chart pattern that's going to have a very big test coming up of of a number of factors and that's including the daily the weekly monthly says 87.07 would be the major support so i wanted to cover those things i'm missing the dollar just wanted to show the dollar fantastic move in the dollar today uh, going from just above the low of yesterday to a uh, higher high, so it's it's really uh, it it's not an engulfing candle because it didn't make a lower low, but it, it's a very bullish candle just on the day. But it needs to see the stochastic, which is making a turnaround here below twenty percent, go to about twenty five percent. It's at nineteen forty seven, and you've got to see that volat the slow moving average of the um, MACD start to get towards the fast moving average and that's quite a way that's uh, that's quite a way to go so uh and the dollar is actually at this point back above the nine period moving average in the weekly chart it's very important for it to hold there so i think i've covered a bunch of stuff upside would be if the dow by the end of the day it's going to be really tough to do there are a number of reasons why i think that but if by the end of the day the dow is only down 89 points instead of down 178 I would say that that shows that we've got a really whippy sideways action coming up and we'll keep going up and down. Let's go to Mike in Lakewood, California. Hi, Mike. How are you? Oh, pretty good. How about you? I'm good. Thank you. I'd like to talk to you about Deutsche Bank, symbol DB. Okay. Do you have a position in this? Yeah, I bought the um, May puts, the 40 puts yesterday when it was up. So I'm doing very well, but I'd like to know what you think about it you know, over the next couple of weeks. I think it's going to go a lot lower, but all right. And and I I'm kind of with you. I agree. 
But most importantly, what I'd like to do right now is just to sh talk about this in the monthly chart, because this is a very interesting chart. First of all, congratulations, because I believe that you should be going down. Uh, it's a 39.41. DB is the symbol down $1.80. Uh, the big test is going to come right there at between 38.42, between 30 and the 38.40s. If it breaks that, then I'm, I'll explain what I'm looking at. First, let me just show something. This is a German bank, Deutsche Bank. Um, it, it once had a move that was started from a beautiful monthly doji candle. Uh, it should have been there. No, no, no. Let me just double check. Uh, I thought I checked that out. 35 round number low, 36. Oh, so that's A, B, C, hmm, D. Oh, just give me one second here. 94.29, 94, 95.45. So that's D. A, B, C. Okay, that's actually a G. Sorry, I've got a peak F at the very top. So it goes from a low of 35 round number low back in October of 2002 to a high of 158.59 in May of 2007. And then it plunges down again. This loves dojis. And it goes down to 21.04, a lower low to the February uh, week of the February 27th of 2009. It runs up to the 200 period moving F a peak B minus because it fails, comes down, and now it's made a series of peak A to B, fail, and A to B again, which looks close to failing, but it hasn't. So, so far, the monthly is just neutral in a sideways trading range, but it is making, it has been making lower lows and lower, lower highs. That's the monthly chart. So let me see if I can get rid of that. Okay. Now what we're going to look at is the weekly chart. This I find fascinating. The weekly chart has a series of A, B. Let me just finish this up. One. Here we go. Just very quickly. A, B, C, D. No, it's not a D. I think we've done the same thing again. Uh, 47.95 this time and 47.48. So that's right. And it goes to peak E. In the weekly chart, pulls back, starts a brand new peak D, gets close to the 200 period moving average, and now is pulling back. Flat stochastic at 10%, which says there isn't yet strength, although it's tried to turn up from yesterday, uh, from last week, but it hasn't succeeded. The, the area to watch closely would be the low of 38.43, and so far it is making slightly higher highs, with higher lows. Now let's go to the daily chart. And the daily chart said, "Hey, how did you know to show, how did you know to buy the puts? What made you do that?" I've been watching this stock for a while and I'm looking at all the problems in Europe and I think there's a lot more more underlying than um what they're putting out and I think their exposure is a lot more than what people are putting out plus they're having some other problems, regulatory problems that I keep looking at the news, so I've been basically waiting till it bounces up. I buy the puts, and when they it comes down, I I've been I'm closing them. But in this case, it looks like now with the market itself having problems, and I hear the music. I can wait for the break. Yeah. Okay. So I I've got, I think I I have exactly what we're looking at here in Deutsche Bank DB. We'll be back with Mike in Lakewood and Mike in New York straight after this break. Dow's down 160. S&P's down 24. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary for Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. This is Basil Chapman, and it is the Tiger Technicians Hour. And um, we are on with Mike in Lakewood, California, who had a fabulous trade. Just put in a trade yesterday at a bounce up in uh, Deutsche Bank. And uh, DB is a symbol that's trading at 39.46 down to dollar 75. It closed yesterday at 41.21. So that's uh, very nice, almost two point uh, decline. Now, this is what we're going to be looking at because the fast moving average of the MACD is still quite positive, and the histogram uh, is above the 0% line. That says be a little careful because there is internal strength um, still showing. The stochastic says, uh-uh, you might be talking internal strength, but I'm at 52%, and if I keep going down with the unbalanced volume, that's going to be very negative, and in fact, the relative strength also is quite weak. Now, what I'd be looking at is this. The day is young. This is, we're already down 156 in the in the Dow. The, uh, we are down 260-something on Monday, up 100 and whatever it was yesterday, 150-something. So the whipsaw action is something that we've got to be aware of, and it's going to filter into all these different areas. When I'm looking at the, the weekly chart, the weekly chart says because we've been trading below the low of 39.26, which, uh, which was the low of the week of the 28th of, of September of last year, it says take a lot of credence in the nine-period exponential moving average of 42.16, which it failed to get to yesterday in the pop-up, but that was a level it just touched um, the nine-period moving average last week and then pulled back. The flat stochastic says, 
until that stochastic goes into the teens and then the 20s, upside is going to be really limited. That's what it's saying right now. And the monthly chart says, <clears throat> once again, the fast-moving average is showing strength. That's the reason why it's tried to rally towards the nine-period moving average, but the stochastic is still way under 80% at 68. So my, my bias is with you. I'm thinking this has further to go but what you really want to see i don't know if you have enough puts now you've got your strategy all i'm going to say to you is that within the strategy the price levels to consider are um if the if the if deutsche bank rallies towards the end of the day and closes up above 39.75 i don't think it's going to happen but thinking and acting are two separate things if it does that, I just didn't have a chance to grab the 120-minute chart. Yes, the reason the reason why I'd be a little careful on the upside is that if there was a turnaround in the 120-minute chart and it started to trade at 39.75 or higher, then all of a sudden the MACD would start to improve a little bit in the 120-minute chart, but the stochastic would suddenly say, hey, I've got a bit of a divergence by rallying while the price has been falling back. That's the only bit of caution I'm going to give you because if it gets to that level, I'd say, you know what, um, tighten your, whatever it is, a mental stop or the price stop or the stop of the put that you have on some part of your position. This is what I would love to see, that it closes below 39.50, it's at 39.44, that uh, a Deutsche Bank actually at the end of the day pulls back and closes lower than it is right now of 39.18. It goes to 39.08, somewhere around there. And then gaps down tomorrow below 38.80. And that'll say we're making the H pattern. And that makes that whole area in the 38.40s, that would be the target. And that's where I would take something off. So it's a three-step process here. Either it's going to be a bounce later on today. And the later on, and my, my trend gauge says be a little careful. We're getting to an area where we could have a sudden rally. I, I'm not sure it's going to happen. I'm just saying that's what it's saying. And those are the parameters. But... Being European in in in, in nature, in, well, it's a European stock. I'm suspecting that if the market closes weak today, you'll get foreign markets down again tonight, and then Deutsche Bank should gap down tomorrow morning. But what I would say to you is at 38.40, that's where you've got to start handling the trade. I think you said that at a certain point you you would be taking profits, but that would be an area where I would definitely take something off. Yeah, so if it rallies help. back to I'm sorry, if it rallies back today, I'll take some off. I've got I've got fifty puts, so I can afford to take some off if, hold if the you, others. Right. If you've got fifty, I don't want to tell you how to arrange it because you've obviously no, no, I appreciate man your advice. managed these very well. But I would think one third, one third, one third, and if you can keep a core position and the market keeps going down into Friday, Deutsche Bank says that the candle to look at is the weekly candle because it closed below 38.43 would probably set up even lower prices next week. So okay. congratulations. Great trade. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Have a good day. And you too. Mike and Lake, we're looking at Deutsche Bank. We're going, to, we're going all the way up to uh, New York. We're going to Mike in New York. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Basil? Very well. Thank you. Did, first, did you get my email on Uberman? Yeah, and you know what? I had it already, but I was just so busy. I'm going to have a look at it later in, on today. Thank you. Um, question on SLW and AUY. Okay. SLW, folks, we'll look at We've got a break coming up, and SLW is Silver Wheaton Core, trading at 2291, down 70 cents, and AUY, and I'll be right back with Mike. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can't use your smartphone to view Tiger TV, but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mob in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. 
In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour, and we're looking at a Dow that's down 152, S&P's down 24. We're getting used to seeing these minus 24s in the S&P there. And um, there is the Volatility Index screen to the upside. It is at uh, 1720s. Uh, that that's big. It's been in the 17s today. That took out this is leg D now in the volatility index. And we're online with uh, Mike in New York, and we're looking at SLW, which is silver, wheat, and core. Now I'm looking at the monthly chart, and the monthly chart says the MACD is still very negative. The stochastic is getting to an area where there should be less downside action without bounces. In other words, it should be. Some kind of a bounce coming up very soon. It doesn't tell me yet, 11%, that it's all over with the downside. What does say that there's a chance that we're coming to some kind of strong support area is that there's not a, not a horizontal line, but a channel line. And it's a channel inside track, the technique that I use in the Chapman Wave where I draw a very narrow band at the bottom of a channel and at the top of the channel. And that becomes the repellent, propellant line, a, a, a zone. In this case, it should become the support propellant zone. And that takes it from 20 to 92, where it is, into an area that starts at about 21.95. So it's a point lower to about 20.58. So it's a bit within, within a point or two 
of getting to some kind of a balance level. That's number one. Number two is, so that means a 10% risk right now on a small position for a balance is on the weekly chart, something that I would, I'm going to talk about in a moment. But first, what we want to do is say that the monthly chart on Silver Weekly having made a peak F top, just like the last one was a peak F top at 41.30. So at 47.60, there was a peak F top in the monthly chart. And that says that there, uh, let me just redraw that. That would be, okay, so that's not quite the same channel line. It went above it for a little bit. That there is, um, the support line that we're looking at is 22.95, as I mentioned before. That goes back to, um, May of last year, but the real support is this whole area. These two candles of May and uh, June of 2010 with a high of 21.58 and a low of 17. That whole area, in fact, I'll draw it in right now, should become the area of great importance because it's so one to the left. Now we're going to go to the right. So put that in. Make that green. Here we go. And you can see it's a very clear thing. And that says between this month and next month, there should be a test of this area that I just discussed between 20, call it 22 and 17. And that's where there has to be. It's just imperative that the, um, that the support starts in the daily, filters into the weekly, and by the end of May, you're starting to see a bounce that takes you back into the candle of um, May of last year, which would be between 22.94 and 31. So it has to be a bounce. So here we go. Are you looking to, for a potential long in this? No, I'm short uh, right now, and I'm wondering whether I it's worthwhile to cover some now. At, oh, uh, oh, okay. You know. Everything I just discussed applies because that's really very, that's very, what I was discussing is very important in terms of how it should try to make some kind of a low and what it would bounce to. So this is what I'm going to recommend. If you are short, congratulations, because that's exactly the way that you should have been for this whole move down. And I would, I would have two positions and the one position Keep your core position. Let it prove itself to be able to really start a move up because the gold stocks are not acting well, even though the GLD is up a dollar sixty-three. So I would be looking at this, and I would say, I'm just going to grab the hundred and twenty-minute chart. Yeah, hundred and twenty-minute chart's close. I would lower the stop on part of your position to the high of yesterday, which is twenty-four ninety-seven. In fact, if you're going to risk a dollar ninety. And there's only a dollar ninety left on the downside before some kind of really good support attempt comes in. I wouldn't give up that dollar ninety. I would actually take less than what what I would have put on as a stop. I would take off some right now at twenty three, because you've had a really good move, and I would reward myself as well as getting cash ready in case this does rally and you want to short it again because it fails. So. At this particular point, because waiting for 2490 or 2610, the nine period moving average, gives up a lot of gains. I'd rather have that in my pocket and say, wow, I missed the opportunity of in that particular position of going down another dollar ninety. Um, but at least I'd be saying, hey, I never gave up a dollar ninety or two dollars ten cents out of my pocket. Uh, you understand my thinking? Yeah, so, basically it's uh, take some gains and then reload. Uh, yeah, if it if it has the balance and it gets to twenty six ten or twenty five ninety to twenty six eighty, and then gold actually can't can't even hold and starts to pull, gold and silver start to pull back, then you can re reload and then you've got that price point of twenty twenty what did I say twenty one to seventeen or twenty two to seventeen as as target on the downside, and, oh. and that and that way you've got your core position and you've got cash and you've given yourself extra leeway on a bounce by taking the money off now and not giving it up gives you a little extra room for your your um for your buy stop so i hope that helps and just i've got people waiting so let me just you oh. said a a u y i'll just do a it's almost the same thing a u y is in fact showing a little bit of strength right now um i the the weekly chart is still very bad the monthly chart is very bad but here again just on a small position if you're short 
I take a little bit off. Um, it's getting ready for at least a bit of a bounce. All right, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling. Let's go to Ben in Tallahassee. Hi, Ben. How are you? Excellent, Ben. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Um, one quick comment and then question on the Dow Jones. Um, yes. This is this is where I, I really think the, the Chapman wave shines, because now is where I say I don't care about the 120-minute. I don't care about the daily. I'm going to go to the weekly psychiatrist and see what he tells me for a bill of health. And I'm looking at a stochastic still in, the I think, the low 90s. 95%. And, it, it, and it's above the, the, the 90 MA. So, uh, I mean, I'm looking at this, and I just wanted to question that would be, do you still see this as a, uh, I think, uh, is it a peak C? Or uh, that, that would be my ultimate question. There. Well, the question, of course, folks, let me just, just briefly tell what the folks uh, are, are listening to if you aren't at a computer. What we're looking at is the law of 12,471 in the weekly chart of the Dow. It made a peak A. At uh, on the week of the 21st of December, 13,365. And in the Chapman Wave methodology, you want to go in a buy mode to at least a peak D. So it goes to, now I've called this a phantom B. It isn't really a B at 14,019.76 uh, to 14,022.60 is a three-point difference. But there were so many close, slightly higher highs. I'm trying to get parallel with the S&P. So I'm calling this a phantom peak C. It's really B. And there's no other way I can count it unless I call it a, a G. And this is this is not a G action at all. So I'm with you. The the weekly so chart even, is so it's, even better. <laughs> it, it is better. But I don't want to mess around because the majority of the other stocks have really gotten to peak Ds and Es in the weekly chart. I don't want to mess around. So I want it to be ahead of the game. So what I'm looking at here, two things. Number one is on the longer term, I have no choice. Leg C, maybe peak C in the weekly, leg C in the monthly. If you expect D's, that's the fourth highest peak in leg D, I have to still remain bullish. Shorter term, we're looking at whether this is going to be a rotational market or not is going to depend on how the um, different sectors. For instance, if you're looking at the IYC, I don't know if I can grab that here. Yeah, if you're looking at the IYC, it's also in leg C up, and I've got this in leg E in the weekly, but it's been a spectacular move, and it should pull back, and it's made a peak D in the, in the daily, so it says to me this is a time for caution on the shorter term. Absolutely. If you're looking at Coca-Cola and Johnson & Johnson, that picture says that if the rotation continues and these defensive stocks keep holding up, then you've got to look at the BBHs or the IBB. Oh, I haven't got oh, I did the notation. What happened? Let's go to IBB. Uh, oh, man. All right. Doesn't matter. This is uh, leg uh, 426. So this is A, B, C, D, E, possibly leg F, unless it's recycled in the uh, NASDAQ biotech sector, the biotechnology ETF. And that, that on a monthly basis and as well as on a daily basis, kind of on the weekly but not really, is saying it's getting quite overbought. So there the stochastics at 93%, but the monthly chart is 94%. So I think that we, if we get a sector rotation, that's the area that could pull back then we've got to find out which areas would hold up. Otherwise, as we saw on Monday and as we saw earlier today, almost all sectors are going to be pulling back at the same time, and that's going to be the issue in the correction that's coming. Do we have a concerted, um, a, a, an overall smash to the downside because all the sectors are overbought? Um, and we have to now even include the XLF, which was, Acting okay and now has made a peak D top, um, but and the weekly chart is in P at probably peak E this week. But the stochastic still at 83%, but the MACD is turned down, about to cross down. So, how the rotation comes in? So, let me answer your question. Yes, it's still very bullish on the weekly chart. Yes, it's very bullish on the monthly chart. But daily chart is the rudder. In other words, the engine keeps running, but if you turn the rudder a little bit, it's going to change the direction, even though the momentum keeps going. But the momentum will then turn 
to the downside, and that's what I've got to be careful of. Because if the Dow, let me just give you this uh, on a shorter term basis. If the Dow takes out the up channel, and I'll show you right now, if you're looking at the charts, look how beautiful this up channel is. It's held it in a spectacular way. I'm going to squeeze it. You don't have to see all the notation. You just need to see that red line. That red line, since the low of 11 from the low of the, uh, in November, the 16th of November, at 12,471, has held that support line constantly. So now, this is the one, two, three. This will be the fourth time. Normally, I would expect on the fourth time of a test that it won't hold. And that says to me, if the Dow closes under 14,470, give it a little room. Let's call it 14,450, closes under it. There's a real good chance that we've started a correction on the daily, and that correction says 14,452 is also the um, nine period exponential moving average uh, supporting the weekly chart. And if that happens, then my suspicion is the candle of the week of the 8th of March with a low of 14,030 and a higher 14,413. That's going to be the candle of most importance if we come down. And the 13,793 area is the monthly chart. So that, in a nutshell, sums up 40,000, uh, what did I say, 40,000, right. uh, 550. It's really very important. How we take that out is going to be very important. Okay. So okay. I, I hope, that, and also if I look at my Dow Quartet, GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX, they're all consolidating. IBM is holding up a little bit better than the others, but I, I'd be very careful. So this is a period where it's just prudent to be careful. That's why I've started to add shorts to my opening call. Okay. Very good. Thanks, Basil. Thank you very much for calling, Ben. I appreciate it. Let's go to Bob in Louisville, uh, Kentucky. Hi, Bob. How are you? How are you doing? Good morning. Good. Hey, listen, I wanted to uh, go over uh, GDX right quick, if you would. Yes. Yes. So GDX, folks, this is the junior ETF. It's the, uh, it is called the Market Vectors Gold Miners ETF. And what we've seen is it's taken out the left side support levels in the, uh, in the from May of 2009 at 32.68. It's trading at 28.73 right now. Little doji candle forming saying, hey, I might be ready for a bit of a bounce. That's number one. The monthly chart is going to need a lot from the weekly chart and definitely a lot from the daily. The daily, just like I was talking about the Dow on the way down, so now I'm looking at the GDX on the way up, a possible attempt at a turn to the upside. Do you have a position in this? No, I don't. I, I, I was thinking that uh, the gold, uh, gold and silver bowls have got um, to maybe find a bottom and then get, um, as even Tom talks, maybe a... Um, a B to C move, you know, on the way down. Right. I mean, but we need that bounce. Right. Now, there are a couple of things that are happening in the gold contract, and my, I don't know whether, what to call it, my, my senses, my instinct tells me that although gold is ready for a bounce, I still think we need to wait out either May and maybe even going into past the summer before gold actually makes a move of, of consequence. So let me do this. I'm going to um, I'm going to do a little work on the GDX right now because it's broken the support levels I was looking at before. And when we get back, I will discuss it in terms of what would constitute for me a sense that the weekly chart has turned around for a longer term bounce, or what will be the a short term bounce in the daily. So I'll be right back with Bob in Louisville, Basil Chapman, Dow's down 153. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. 
If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. We're looking at the GDX. It's uh, at 2861, down 21 cents. And it has gotten into an area of key support. And that support was at 2925 back a week of the 13th of March of 2009. Now, this is fascinating to me always. Look at this pattern. If you're looking at the chart, look at, you don't have to look at all the notation. I've especially squashed it for other reasons. But most of them have gone to peak D, peak D, peak D. That goes to an E, goes to an E, goes to a D. And then it has a right shoulder, a, a right arm extension. I always raise, raise my arm. Extension to 6698, which is again a peak E. And that pulls back. And now look at look at the beautiful symmetry between the upside and the downside in terms of time and the high of 64.62. We could go to 66.98, but let's go to this one, 64, yeah, 62, which which is the key uh, high point back in December, the week of December the 10th of uh, 2010. So there's a price time match. You would never be able to say that this is in a crash mode it feels like it now it's just a normal retracement going up in the same time same amount of weeks that it comes down and it's testing this left side low 
Now, what's really important about this is that now it's on an acceleration phase, and that acceleration phase is taken out in a, in a longer time period, a couple of, about three weeks longer. It's taken out that low. It hasn't closed below it, but 29.25 is a low that's very important, and today's low is 28.37. So I'm looking at this, I'm saying that area should be a, a magnet so that if it goes down a little more, it should try to right, bounce right back into the 29th, number one. Number two, it says at some point, it looks to me like it's going to try to test the 21.20. Um, let's go one step at a time. 24.50 to 21. Uh, no, 24, did I move? Yes, 24, uh, 2490 to 2120 area. So this is what I'm looking at. On a shorter term basis, if all of a sudden gold is, is going to be perceived as a harbinger of safety, you'll see the gold contract, you'll see the GDX go quickly to 137 something. What I would do now is the GDX is close to an area of support, just as I was speaking to uh, Mike just now about uh, an SLW. So I'm going to make the recommendation, and it's just a high risk. It's what's called catching a falling knife. We used to have someone in the den who jokingly used to sell steel knives for those who wanted to catch a falling knife. But this is a recommendation because I think that at 2861, you will see 2861 within three to five sessions. So that even if you were wrong by two points, one and a half points, I've got a trend line in my daily chart that goes all the way back and it hit that trend. Look at this. This is just a beautiful work of art. Look at that. From the trend line that started at the gap back in uh, this, uh, September of 2012, all the lows hit exactly, and the last three lows hit exactly this trend line with a volume spike. So I suspect we could go down a little bit, that will bounce, and we're real close to some kind of a bounce in the GDX. So, Bob, I'm going to recommend, if you're watching it closely, you can take a little nibble on the GDX at 28.59, but because it's a little nibble, you're going to give it maybe two points stop. You can either do that or have the patience to wait for a turnaround, and that turnaround, you could start to nibble on it if it closes above 30.28, the high of yesterday. But you see, 30, 30, you're giving up one and three quarter points for a little bit of safety, but there's no real safety. The safety is to try to grab it as close to what might be perceived as a low, as based on my 120 minute chart, it's just a chance that there could be a nice pop up here. And it might just be a pop up and then you give it up. But that's the way I would do it if you're trying to time it. If you're not trying to time it, then have patience, wait for a proper turnaround, two to three bars of upside activity, and then the low should be some support in the 2850s. So I hope that helps you. It sure has. I, uh, I, I kind of agree that. Uh... The bottom is pretty close to being in, so, and I just wanted a five or seven day trade. So. Yeah, remember, it's a bottom. It's not the bottom, but it's a bottom. Right, yeah, I agree. Right, right. Thanks thanks for being there, Thank and thanks for so calling much. in. Thanks. Stay tuned for Larry Pesavento, folks. Boy, is this the time that you want to see Larry Pesavento talk about his, his Gartley's, etc. I'll be back tomorrow.